In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own obby checkpoint system in Roblox Studio so that when you reach the next stage in an obstacle course, your checkpoint will be saved and so that if you die, you won't get teleported back to the start, you will only get teleported back to your most recent checkpoint. Now my name's Alvin Blocks, I teach loads of people like you how to make their own Roblox games and earn lots of Robux from them, so if you're interested in that type of video content then do consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on future videos, it really does help my channel. Shout out to Wolfie Games who suggested the idea for this video in the last vid, let's get straight into it. Firstly, we're going to insert a folder into the workspace, I'm going to call this folder Checkpoints. Next, we're going to insert the Teams service, so if you can't see Teams listed in the Explorer, you're going to need to click on Model and then Service, but you should see the Teams folder, so click on the plus next to it and insert a team. Now, for each stage in your obby, you're going to want to create a new team, so the first team is going to be called Stage 1. Okay, and you're going to want to set auto assignable to false. So uncheck that auto assignable box and you can also give a team color. Okay, now you're also going to, for each stage, you're going to want to insert a spawn. So click on the model tab and click on spawn. This will insert a spawn location. Now it's really important that you set the name of the spawn location to the same as the uh, stage name in teams. So for stage one, this spawn will be called stage one because we've got a stage one team for it as well. We're going to put it inside of the checkpoints folder. They all need to be inside the checkpoints folder. But also what's most important is that you go into the properties window and you can open that by clicking on view properties. And if you scroll down here to the team section, you want to make sure that allow team change on touch is checked. You want that to be true, but change neutral to be unchecked. Okay, and you don't need to bother about the team color. We'll get to that later on. So, what we should have is a spawn location and a team, both with the same name for each stage. So, once you've done that, you can copy the spawn location. I'm going to duplicate it by right clicking and clicking duplicate, and that will create a clone of it. And I'm going to drag this one all the way over to my next stage. Okay, and now that it's there, I need to rename it because we're no longer at stage one. So we'll change this one to be called stage two. So we should have a spawn location called stage one over there and one called spawn location over here. Now you need to do the same thing for the teams. We're going to insert a, another team. In fact, I'm going to right click and duplicate this team. I'm going to call it stage two and I'm going to change the team color to something different. It has to be a different color. You can distinguish them. So, I'm going to keep doing this for all the other stages, so duplicate the spawn location, drag it over to the next stage. I know we've got two stages in one here, but that's because there's no space over here, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to call this spawn location stage 3, but because we need a team to go with it, I'm going to duplicate one of these teams, rename it to stage 3, and choose a different team colour. Now, really important that auto-assignable is set to false here, it must be false and also very critical that each spawn location, again, allow team change on touch is checked. That's so that when you step on a new spawn, you, you your checkpoint will get saved so that you can spawn back at that checkpoint and that neutral is false. And that just stops people from skipping to the end uh, and, and being assigned to a random spawn. We don't want that. So make sure it's false and you can leave the team color as well. That's important. So just leave it as it is. Okay, so I'm going to do one more now for the final stage. You can also press Ctrl D to duplicate, by the way. Change it to stage 4. I'm going to duplicate another team. If you have more stages, just keep on doing this for um, as, for all your different stages. So there we go, we've got stage 1, 2, 3, 4. And for each team, there was a spawn location to go with it. Excellent. So now we can begin the coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus on server script service and I'm going to insert a script. You need to do that as well. Now once this script's in the game, I'm going to rename it to checkpoint script. Just so that we know that's what it's going to be managing. It's going to be doing the checkpoints, but you can name it whatever you like. Now in this script, firstly I'm going to write a variable and that variable is going to 
be a reference to this folder and it's going to get all of the spawns which are stored inside this folder and it's going to return it to us in table form now table form is kind of like a list and it's going to be a list of all of the spawn all of the stage spawns in that folder so i'm then going to write a for loop and what this for loop will do is it will loop through every single spawn checkpoint in that folder in that list table that we've just gotten from this variable that's why we've got that variable in here because that's what we're looping through so basically what it's going to do is any code inside this for loop will run for every single checkpoint so currently we haven't set the team color of the spawn locations yet and we've done that for a reason because for each spawn location you need to set the team color to the same color as that team okay but because that can get you know quite boring having to do that over and over and over again for each spawn what we can do is we can use a script that will do it for us and that's why it's so important that you use a different team color for each stage so you don't want to have two teams with the same color okay so what we'll do is we will say checkpoint dot team color equals and then we can get the team object out of the teams service by saying game dot teams colon find first child and that's going to find the first team object in there with the name that we give so the name that we want to give in these brackets is going to be the name of the checkpoint because if you remember we've named the checkpoint the same thing as our team so we know that the team name is going to be the same as the checkpoints name so we can just get the team by saying game dot teams find first child and then the checkpoint name goes in here um oh yes we need to say dot team color on the end here because we're getting the team color property and what that will do is it will update the team color for every single spawn location and when you do that when we're setting the team color of the spawn location checkpoint we are connecting it to that team so that when you step on it it's going to change your team color to the, that team so when you step on stage three and the team color will be set to really blue that's a way of connecting them so that your team can be set to stage three and when you die you will go back to the spawn of stage three and now each spawn location should be linked to that spawn uh, to that team sorry let's have a look in the properties window you can see yeah the team color for this spawn is bright red if we go into teams stage one you can see it's also bright red so stage two is lime green let's look at stage two the spawn location that's also lime green so they're now connected and that means when i get to the next stage and i step on that stage's spawn location because the allow team change on touch property is true look at the leaderboard it's going to change me to step two to stage two because stage two shares the same color as the team color of the spawn so when i stepped on it it would change my team color and if we now were to die we wouldn't want to restart all the way at the beginning it would teleport us to that spawn the spawn of the the linked spawn of that team and it's linked because it's connected through team color so we've respawned back at our checkpoint how cool is that okay now what you can also do in the checkpoint script is do the same thing but with the color so you could say checkpoint dot brick color equals and just put the same line of code here because it's still the same color of the team and that should change the color of the checkpoint let's have a look there we go so now we've got the different colors and if you want to update the color for each spawn don't change it on the spawn location brick change it in the teams um in the teams service here change the team object so if i change the first one to electric blue i haven't changed the spawn location and that's because it's automatically going to update so it saves us all the work and now if i need to add more stages i just need to add a new spawn location change its name and add a new team and the work has been done for me so you can now put in as many spawns and stages as you like and it will work seamlessly now the final thing that we have to do is we need to set the player's team to stage one when they begin because right now we're just spawning above the first spawn and that's because it's in the center of the map so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new script we're going to duplicate the checkpoint script and we're going to call this script player team and what we're going to do is we're going to say game dot players dot player added this is an event and it will run whenever a new player joins the game 
So game.players.player added connect function player. And then we can say player dot team equals game dot teams dot stage one. And that will set the player's team to stage one as soon as they join the game. If we have a look here, before we even step on the spawn, our team is already stage one. So that's brilliant. Okay, so that's the end of this video, and I've shown you how to create a obby checkpoint system. Please do like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if it has helped you, and share it with a friend as well who you think will be interested in learning this. Because it didn't take long, did it? Under 10 minutes. And in the next video, I will show you how to save a player's team. Because you don't want a player to leave the game and then rejoin later on and have to complete the obby all over again. So we're going to learn how to save their... Uh, checkpoint and load it so that they spawn back where they left off so make sure you're subscribed and you've got the notifications on my channel so you don't miss that you really don't want to miss that one and i'll see you in the next video you can go to the next video actually by clicking the thumbnail on your screen so thanks for watching cheers bye